If you want to get more into shoujo, but just do not vibe with the romance stuff, then keep watching, because I will help you to get into shoujo. Of course, there are many shoujo manga with romance, but so there are shoujo without or little romance. I have four recommendations for you that have little to no romance at all, and the last one actually may surprise you. But before we get right into it, don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay updated to new videos. So let's get it! In the Japanese city Tokyo, the story Nana takes place in the year 2001. The two main characters, Nana Osaki and Nana Komatsu, both have traveled to Tokyo for different reasons. In order to advance her musical career with her punk band Black Stones, Nana Osaki, a musician, moved to Tokyo. She also has a very tomboyish mentality. As for her soon-to-be best friend, Nana Komatsu, also known as Hachi, she moved to Tokyo to meet up with her boyfriend Shoji Endo, who promised to see Nana, aka Hachi, so they could continue dating. On the train to Tokyo, the two women eventually cross paths. And it's obvious that they immediately click as friends. Soon after, we see the two living together in an apartment. This would lead to a whirlwind of drama, romance and band conflicts, heartbreak and so much more. It's a fantastic story that piques your interest and keeps you wondering on how anything like this could possibly function so perfectly. The first thing that immediately comes to mind when I think of Nana is how realistic it is in compared to many other manga series. The two main characters, who also happen to share the name Nana, are introduced in the beginning of the story in an apparently routine manner, similar to your standard shoujo manga. The characters in Nana seem to be genuine individuals. They have good and terrible traits, as well as dreams and insecurities. And they make both good and bad choices. Heartbreak, Betrayal, job obstacles and the search of one's identity are all topics that are addressed in the series. Nana isn't afraid to show the harsh facts of life, such as the fallout from bad choices and the effects of past trauma on the character's present day lives. Additionally, Nana explores concepts like ambition, desire and dream chasing. As a reader, you may share the character's objective, aspirations and even identify with their struggles to achieve their goals. The manga accurately depicts the compromises and the sacrifices that people have to make in search of their own definition of happiness and prosperity. For those who enjoy realistic stories with dashes of comedy, I highly suggest this manga. Also, it's noticeable that this is written for a quite older audience, so keep that in mind. The setting takes place at Koka High School of Musical and Performing Arts. It is a prestigious institution where young ladies are trained to become a member of the renowned all-female Koga acting troupe. Getting accepted into this institution is a very rare privilege and the training is really strict, with great rivalry among potential performers. Meet Patana Pesarasa, a vibrant and loving young girl who aspires to be a top performer aspiring to play Oscar in Koga Theatre's production of The Rose of Versailles. Sarasa, despite her height and her liveliness, does not suit the stereotypical picture of a Koga theatre actress, but she possesses undeniable star quality. She is passionate about proving her ability to succeed in accomplishing her goal, refusing to be hindered by anyone else's skepticism. Sarasa also plans to become friends with her roommate Narata Ai, a quiet former idol who enrolled to Koka school to avoid male influence. Narata, unlike Sarasa, is not interested in theater and likes to keep her distance from people. Being a creative myself, for me this series stands out masterfully in combining themes of determination, camaraderie and self-discovery against the backdrop of a competitive and yet so difficult artistic environment. You are drawn into Koka school community and also the complexity of the pupils' lives by their unique characteristics and ambitions that all provide a compelling story. They face internal struggles and dreams that make them incredibly relatable. Throughout the story, we witness their evolution. 
their growth over time. And what's amazing is how the characters' past traumas and backstories influence their present actions, giving us a glimpse into their motivations of the now and how they pursue their dreams. And this is exactly what makes it real. Kageki Shoujo shows the cruelty of utilized teaching methods in any performing arts institution. In my opinion, this is really a diamond in the rough, so please go check this out to get a different view on manga that is not only about idol lives, but rather the complexity of the performing arts industry. Explaining the plot is a bit complicated, since you can see this manga more as a collection of different stories of characters that get introduced along the way. So basically, rent a girlfriend vibes, but differently. The characters, particularly the female ones, are the manga's best feature. There are several female leads in this manga, and each of them has a unique story arc that covers several volumes. Despite the fact that the manga's plot arcs all revolve around the idea of renting people, the manga manages to examine this idea from a variety of perspectives, including prostitution, sugar daddies, cosmetic surgery, and host clubs. It is engaging to follow the female characters since they are all portrayed in a convincing manner with subtle differences in their personalities and mindsets. The male characters tend to be less fascinating and mostly serve as a story device. But they are not poorly written, rather they are just essential. The presence of the protagonist throughout the entire manga is one aspect that is yet unknown. While the main character in the first story arc may be considered the manga's protagonist, her position significantly reduces in the most following story arcs to make room for more female leads. This gives the manga an episodic feel, but it just depends whether you like that or not. But personally, I think that that is making the series more dynamic. So if you love emotional damage, then just read this manga. Just read it. <laughs> I am genuinely so surprised about the amount of people that do not talk about this series because oh my gosh, even though it has a male lead, it is still considered a shoujo. Takashi Natsume has a unique ability to see spirits, a power that he has inherited from his grandmother Reiko Natsume. Reiko had bound spirits to her surface in a book called Book of Friends. Throughout the series, Natsume's main goal is to return the names of the spirits, which were bound to his grandmother, thus releasing them from servitude. Natsume inherits the Book of Friends and he becomes the target of spirits who wish to possess its power. He forms a bond with a powerful yet friendly spirit named Madara, often referred to as Nyanko Sensei. Together, they embark on a journey to free the spirits bound by the Book of Friends. The relationships between people and spirits are delicately explored in the series. Natsume's interactions and encounters with the spirits often reveal their emotions, regrets, and unfulfilled wishes. Through his experiences, Natsume learns empathy, understanding, and compassion. Not only for the spirits, but also for the humans whose lives have been touched by the super natural. One particular thing that I noticed by reading Natsume's Book of Friends is the philosophical reflection. And what do I mean with that? The manga is rich with life lessons that resonate deeply with you and which you can actually learn from by reading the series. The theme of releasing spirits from the Book of Friends mirrors the lessons of letting go. Natsume's actions illustrate that sometimes letting go of the past, grudges, or attachments can bring freedom, not just to others, but yourself as well. Lessons like facing your fears leads to growth. True friends accept you unconditionally are one of the many things that I highly value when life lessons like these get addressed in any story because to me, it gives this feeling of support. It's like this pat on the back that you just subconsciously need in order to continue with whatever you have to deal with in life, whether it's the good or the bad. Natsume's Book of Friends has great character development, a beautiful storytelling, and obviously the art has to be addressed. So if you're more into literary experiences, you just have to read this manga. Period. These were my picks on shoujo with little to no romance, and if you would like more recommendations, let me know in the comments, and I see you all in my next video. Bye bye!